A suspect taken away in handcuffs after a deadly shooting on the southeast side. Katrina Weber explains what police know so far about the motive. And the radar is going to get a little bit more active this afternoon and especially tomorrow. We'll take a look at the latest forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Take a look at this happening right now in Austin. People being treated for injuries after two cranes collided at a construction site. Austin Travis County EMS reporting 22 people were hurt, 16 of them taken to the hospital. And authorities say all this starting around 930 this morning. Now, the Austin Fire Department says wires from those cranes became tangled, leading to the collision. Officials say none of the injuries are life threatening. We're told people got hurt as they were trying to get to safety because they were worried about a collapse. One of the crane operators is still inside the cabin with his foot on a break. The Austin Fire Department says they don't believe the crane will collapse, but the worker is staying there just in case. We'll keep an eye on that. Meantime, murder, just one of the charges against a man who's accused of firing off a rifle at a southeast side apartment complex. San Antonio police say he shot two innocent bystanders overnight, killing one of them at the apartments near Pecan Valley and East South Cross. Katrina Weber shows us neighbors are feeling the loss of this victim who they say always offered a helping hand. There was no call needed about the commotion at this apartment complex. Officers were nearby at Pecan Valley Road and East South Cross and heard it themselves when gunfire rang out before four this morning. Within seconds, they had the suspected shooter, 20-year-old Giovanni Ponce Benjamin, and his automatic rifle in their custody. Nearby, they found one victim, a man in his 40s, dead from his wounds. They learned there was a second victim, too, a man who had been sleeping in his second-floor apartment. He was rushed to a hospital. Police say both were innocent bystanders hit by gunfire meant for someone else. Once the sun came up, it became clear that a parked car also had been hit, and the news itself began to hit hard among the people who live here. Even without hearing anything from police, neighbors told me they already had a pretty good idea of who the man was who was killed. They say he's someone who was well liked here, who often took care of odd jobs like washing their cars. No one wanted to talk about what happened to him on camera. They say they fear for their own safety here. Police say it was the result of an earlier fight that Benjamin had with someone else. They say he returned to the apartment complex in a bulletproof vest and armed with a rifle, then got into a gun battle with other people. But they say neither of those who were hit by the gunfire had anything to do with it. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a new effort could result in better care for patients at local hospitals. UT Health San Antonio and University Health System announced plans that aim to provide more efficient and seamless care for patients in Bear County and the surrounding communities. The two organizations say they want to improve the overall health of the population. And in order to do that, they want to create a clinical integrated network. This is something that doesn't exist in our city right now. And the advantage to the citizens of San Antonio for having a network like this include the fact that it increases access to care. It increases, in addition to access to care, it increases efficiency. Health officials say the new system will also streamline patients' medical records, which could lead to less mistakes when it comes to receiving care. The partnership will also reduce redundancies across the health care system and could lead to lower costs for patients. Also a priority, expanding training opportunities for medical nursing, dental and other health professional students. Today, City Council holding a special session, taking a look at amendments to the new proposed budget. Because of the impact of COVID-19 on the city, this budget does look different from those in the past. The pandemic affecting the amount of money that the city brings in. Tourism, for example, is taking a big hit as far as saving any money. We're told the city does not plan to lay off any more employees. Instead, it's looking at hiring freezes. And city services like libraries and senior centers also will not be seeing any significant changes. Even though there have been calls to defund the police department, that is not likely to happen at this meeting. City officials previously said that they would work to analyze how the department functions. City council members expected to vote on this budget tomorrow.
In the meantime, here in Bear County, we've been seeing a downward trend when it comes to coronavirus numbers, and city health officials hope that continues. We don't see a Labor Day related spike either. There were 115 new COVID-19 cases reported in the newest Bear County report, and three more people have passed away. However, the, there was another decrease in COVID-19 patients in local hospitals. 228 people are in the hospital, 105 are in intensive care. And for the first time in quite a while, the number of people on ventilators has dipped below 50. It's down to 47. Meantime, the need for blood donors is not letting up this noon. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says its current inventory would only last two days. That's why the Northside ISD is hosting a blood drive today and tomorrow. It's happening at the Embassy Suites Hotel on Landmark Parkway. Those interested in donating blood will need to make an appointment. You can do that by calling the number on your screen. It's 210-731-5590. Or you can go to SouthTexasBlood.org. Today's blood drive ends at 5 this evening. Tomorrow starts at 9 in the morning. It also ends at 5 p.m. STBTC is also looking for people who've recovered from COVID-19. They need convalescent plasma donated. They're offering $50 gift cards for each convalescent plasma donation. And if you want some more information on that, you'll also find that on their website. Two brothers displaced from their west side home after it caught fire this morning. It happened in the 200 block of Friedel Street. That's near Enrique Barrera Parkway. Sarah Costa was on scene when the fire broke out and spoke with firefighters who say what may have ignited those flames. One of the men living in this west side home says he left around five this morning to pick up some food. When he came back, his home was on fire. Immediately, he called for help because his brother who lives with them was still inside. At one point, up to 11 units were responding, packing the very narrow Fridell Street because firefighters said they believe someone was trapped inside. But firefighters didn't need to make any rescues. With the help from some neighbors, the homeowner was able to wake up his brother and safely get him out of the house. The San Antonio Fire Department says they were quickly able to put out the fire, but the home will be unlivable for some time. Firefighters say the fire caused about $30,000 in damage and that it started in a back bedroom. Battalion Chief Wesley West says they believe it was caused by too many electrical appliances plugged in at once, including an AC window unit. Wesley reminds the community about how to plug in those appliances safely. Don't use, uh, you know, multiple uh, extensions on a one plug to plug four or five things into one plug. They're only meant usually if there's only two outlets there, just use the two outlets. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on a shooting on the east side. Police tell us the victim walked to a convenience store after being shot. Police say they found the victim at the Hayes Food Mart last night. However, officers tell us that person was actually shot near Blue Bonnet and Walter Street. Police don't have much information so far, but they did say that they found a car with several bullet holes and blood on Blue Bonnet. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No one has been arrested so far. State Representative Ray Lopez continuing to recover from heart surgery at University Hospital. His family tell us, tells us that Lopez suffered a heart attack on Sunday, so a precautionary coronary bypass was performed yesterday. He's expected to be discharged from the hospital in the next few days with some additional recovery time at home. Lopez was elected in 2019. He represents House District 25, which encompasses most of San Antonio's west and northwest sides. Still cut over this half hour. We're going to have to wait a little longer to find out who the Spurs will take with the 11th pick in this year's NBA draft. Larry Mears will explain why coming up. Hurricane Sally hitting the Gulf Coast as a Category 2 storm. We are tracking the very latest after the break. This morning, Hurricane Sally made landfall as a Category 2 storm near Gulf Shores, Alabama. As ABC's Elwin Lopez reports, the slow, very slow-moving storm dropped heavy rainfall in southern Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. Hurricane Sally lashing the Gulf Coast. Today, more than half a million people already without power across Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida. In Orange Beach, Alabama, 
Treacherous conditions making emergency calls there nearly impossible. Police telling people to seek higher ground until they can respond. And as daylight broke in Pensacola, Florida, Rob Marciano experiencing the worst of the storm. We're in the eastern eye wall of Hurricane Sally here in downtown Pensacola. This is what Main Street looked like. Wind absolutely nuking through here, a storm surge with white caps, debris littering the streets here, a traffic light down, these dangling precariously, and trees down as well. This storm is slow, moving at a sluggish pace, dumping heavy rain, battering coastal areas with four inches an hour. This is insanity. This is Parts of Florida control. and Alabama under flash flood warnings. As Sally continues to crawl inland. Today marks 16 years since Hurricane Ivan ravaged that same exact area near Gulf Shores, Alabama. Now, Sally is not packing Ivan's wind power, but will bring rain for days. In Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, Owen Lopez, ABC News. Outside with live cam while well, they're getting pounded down there on the coast. It's like a normal September day for us. Warm. Warm, hot. Uh, we're hoping for a little bit of rain. They picked up something like 30 inches down there in Florida and Alabama. We'll show you some of the numbers coming up. For us, just a couple stray showers, maybe a thunderstorm today. The aquifer holding steady at 663.7 in your pollen count. Do have a couple in the high category, mold and fall elm. Mold jumped to into the lead today, and then ragweed has dropped down to low. It's at 50. We'll talk about our rain chances today and tomorrow and take a look ahead to the weekend coming up. Having spent my entire childhood going to Dolphin Island and Gulf Shores, Alabama for vacation, uh, I know that probably the next time you pass through there, it's, it's going to look different. Yes, uh, you know, and our thoughts go out to them today. I, they're used to dealing with this stuff. They dealt with it over the last couple of decades, but uh, just a ton of rain. Uh, flooding is going to be the, one of the biggest concerns today. There were some pretty good winds with this hurricane, but that uh, onshore flow, that storm surge and that rainfall. That's probably what's going to do it. We're going to get you an update on Sally coming up here in just a second. First, we got to take a look at the radar here because we do have some showers and thunderstorms starting to develop. And you see those out around Rock Springs and Sonora up towards Junction. It's sort of the leading edge of some energy that will sort of work in our direction. Now, the favorite area for some rain, I think, over the next several hours will be right here in the Hill Country. So Rock Springs, Lakey, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, you can see some of these pop-up showers. And I still think we can see a few here in San Antonio later this afternoon. Uh, it'll be few and far between, uh, but uh, thankfully we do at least have a chance for rain today and tomorrow. Hopefully we can get a couple good downpours around here. And uh, here's why. We have a trough in the upper part of the atmosphere up across the Texas Panhandle. That's going to swing southeast right over top of us tomorrow. So our rain chances will peak tomorrow afternoon and then start to come back down Friday and basically go away this weekend. So let's look at the future cast here. Five o'clock today doesn't show a whole lot. I, I think there actually will be more here in the hill country than what this particular model is showing, but it gives the general idea it'll be hit or miss isolated stuff. And then tomorrow the coverage will be a little bit greater as some of that upper level energy gets closer and any one of these downpours could put down some pretty good rain. Uh, it just probably won't last all that long. Outside right now, we've got 87 degrees at the airport, 86 Stinson, 87 at Kelly, 86 at Randolph. Not a lot of wind out there. And uh, looking at the temperatures around the area, 81 Canyon Lake, 88 New Braunfels, 85 Comfort, 86 right now in Hondo. And we're up to 90 now, Carissa Springs of Cotula. We'll probably see quite a few 90s on the map today. It's still hot and humid. Dew points are right around 70 here in San Antonio. So that's pretty sticky. And then you factor that in, it feels like 92. Uh, there's a heat index at most spots you see here. So it is going to feel like it's in the mid 90s later this afternoon. Uh, looking at the dew points, yeah, they stay high next few days, so it will be sticky until we get to Saturday. Then they drop off a little bit behind our frontal boundary. We should get some drier air in here, which will make for some cooler mornings and nice afternoons. Here's a look at Sally. It's starting to move further inland across parts of Alabama. We've got a tornado watch box here. Oftentimes on the east side of these storms, you can get some of these uh, rotating areas where you can get some tornadoes. But again, I mentioned the rainfall. Look at these estimates. This is radar estimates, but huge numbers nonetheless. 23.5. In some areas, the gradient isn't even showing up, so it's probably higher than that. We're talking about uh, two feet of rain here. 
uh, just incredible, up to 30 inches in some cases. And this system is going to continue to move north towards Montgomery, then eventually turn towards Atlanta and bring some pretty heavy rain there. Winds right now at 75 miles per hour, so it's just barely still a hurricane, probably becoming a tropical storm here soon as it weakens. And then again, curving off to the north and east by Thursday, moving over Atlanta and dumping some pretty heavy rain there as well. I've got to mention, we've got all these storms out here, but we've got another wave that we're watching in the Gulf of Mexico. This has just been sitting here the last couple of days. Now the Hurricane Center thinks there is a chance that this could develop into something and uh, perhaps uh, move into Mexico, although I've seen a couple models where it uh, drifts to the north. Bottom line, we got to watch it. It's here in the Gulf of Mexico, and there is a better chance now that this could develop into something. We will definitely keep you posted the next couple of days. Uh, as for today, though, temperatures at 87 degrees, 2 o'clock, 94 o'clock. We'll be up around 91 for a high. We'll keep a 30% chance of rain in there, and then we'll dip off tonight to a 20% chance. Tomorrow we pick it back up, 40% shot on Thursday, 30% on Friday, mainly down to the south. And then lower humidity Saturday and Sunday. Next week looks dry, too, uh, as we officially go into fall. But again, we'll watch what goes on in the tropics, guys. Fall means football. Yep. You know that. Oh, yeah, and more football coming. I think it's two words, money and fun. Big Ten watching money go away and not having any fun in all the other conferences, SEC. And a lot of pressure yeah. from, you know, parents, players, you name it. Yep. The Big Ten has reversed course. They will start their season in late October. we got the details. Plus, BAM is a block artist coming up with a huge one last night. today that the date of the 2020 NBA draft has been moved to Wednesday, November 18th and will air on ESPN. The Spurs have the 11th and 41st selections this year. The revised date allows additional time to conduct the pre-draft process, gather more information about the potential start date for the 2020-21 season, and advance conversations between the NBA and the Players Association regarding related collective bargaining agreement matters. So again, the 2020 NBA draft is now set for November 18th, but the date remains subject to change as circumstances warrant. And this was the scene inside the Denver Nuggets locker room last night after they beat the Clippers in Game 7, advancing to the Western Conference Finals to face the Lakers. Jamal Murray dropped 40 points, 20 in the second quarter. Denver rolls 104-89, to coming back from a 3-1 hole. The Clippers coming up short once again, and will leave Orlando empty-handed. No, uh, we didn't meet them. Uh, that's the bottom line. Uh, I'm the coach, and, and I'll take any blame uh, for it. But we didn't meet our expectations, uh, clearly, uh, because we had, uh, in my opinion, we, we'd still be playing. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals between Miami and Boston went to overtime. Less than 10 seconds ago, Celtics down two. Jason Tatum driving, rising above the rim for the tying dunk. But Bam on a bio meets him there to block his shot. The no-no of the bubble for sure. Look at that again. Miami wins game one, 117 to 114. He made a great play. Uh, yeah, that's all it is. He made a good play. Can't do nothing about it. That was one of two blocks for Bam. Game two is tomorrow night. Big Ten is going to give fall football a shot after all. Less than five weeks after pushing football and other fall sports to spring in the name of player safety during the pandemic, the conference changed course today and said it plans to begin its season the weekend of October 23rd and 24th. Each team will play eight games in eight weeks, and the conference championship game will be held December 19th. If all goes well, that should give the Big Ten an opportunity to compete for the national championship. Texas senior quarterback Sam Ellinger was named the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award National Player of the Week. And that's after he threw for a career best 426 yards and five touchdowns in the Longhorns 59-3 season opening round of UTEP. The Horns don't play again until September 26 when they travel to Lubbock to face Texas Tech to begin conference play. That will help Jordan Whittington, who's out three to four weeks, recover from surgery to repair a meniscus tear in his knee. Head coach Tom Herman was asked if that would mean more playing time for sophomore walk-on Kai Money, who scored his first touchdown Saturday. He was certainly uh, the personification of his last name Saturday night, so that was good. Kai has proven that, that he's uh, uh, a guy that can really, really help us, and 
you know, if, if circumstances dictate, we, we have no problem putting him in the game and, and knowing that, that he'll deliver. The Red Raiders have been hit hard by the coronavirus with as many as 75 of their 123 players on the active roster, testing positive since June, five more as of Monday. Tough. Yep. But they're hanging in there. <laughs> we'll see you next oh, week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Larry. You got it. Hey, if you have travel plans in your near future, you may want to book with Alaska Airlines. Still ahead, the deal it's offering and why other airlines just can't compete. Plus, dozens of wildfires continue to burn on the West Coast. What state officials in Oregon are doing to identify the victims. Out in the West, firefighters continuing to run into flame filled areas. They're hoping to contain the blazes, but those crews are saying that these are some of the worst fires they've ever seen and they're exhausting themselves and their resources. Heat, drought and a strategic decision to attack the flames early combined with the coronavirus have put a historically heavy burden on the fire teams and it's not over yet. The West Coast is only about halfway through the fire season. One battalion chief says new fires break out before existing ones are contained. While they fight these flames, they and the residents continue to deal with dangerously dirty air. The hazy, gunk-filled air has closed businesses, grounded some flights into Oregon, and even forced school closures. The death tolls continue to rise. State officials in Oregon have put together a mobile morgue to identify victims of those wildfires. Families will be able to go there. They'll be able to give DNA samples so that we can compare them against what we have uh, from, from fire victims. The Oregon State Police captain says that they are building a database using missing persons reports to help them identify the victims. There's still some people who are unaccounted for and there's no word on exactly how many of them are out there. President Donald Trump denied he downplayed the threat of the coronavirus during last night's ABC Town Hall here on KZ 12. The president took questions from uncommitted voters. Those topics range from the coronavirus pandemic to immigration to race relations. When asked why he would downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionate, disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities, the president said he never downplayed it. However, that contradicts what the president said during those recordings with Bob Woodward. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. While his intentions may have been good, many Americans are concerned he still hasn't done enough to fight the pandemic. Meanwhile, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden speaking at a Hispanic Heritage Month event in Florida. This was his first trip to Florida as a nominee and his mission to support, rather to boost support among Latinos. Biden spoke about how valuable immigrants are to our nation. He said the Latino community holds the destiny of this country in the palm of their hands. Hispanic Heritage Month is an important reminder of just how much strength we draw as a nation from our immigrant roots. And for Biden in Florida would dramatically narrow Trump's path to re-election, but there are concerns that Biden is slipping in that state. There are only 48 days left until the 2020 presidential election. Federal interest rates could stay low for the next several years. However, what happens after that is up to discussion right now. As central bank officials meet for a second day today, interest rates are nearly at zero right now. And they've been there since March when the Federal Reserve lowered them due to the pandemic. That's despite unemployment rates falling, which is usually a sign the economy is rebounding. Now officials are looking to the future, attempting to map out where the economy is headed, including what inflation and interest rates will look like. The Fed is set to unveil those projections after today's meeting. Millions of people have lost their jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic, and now Amazon wants to help those people get back to work. Today, the company is hosting a virtual career day aimed at helping people with career advice, whether they want to work at Amazon or somewhere else. Amazon Career Day will include a team of 1,000 recruiters offering 20,000 coaching sessions. All of them are free of charge. All you need to do is participate. to participate is to go to amazon.jobs forward slash career day.
We're hoping that people will join us uh, during that time to hear from career experts inside and outside of Amazon who'll have important insights for your professional career journey. If you do want to work at Amazon, the company currently has 33,000 corporate and tech openings with an average pay of $150,000 a year. Outside with live cam, we've been watching the Gulf Coast get hammered by Sally. A lot of rain down there, and we actually have a chance for some showers around here over the next few days, Justin. We do. In fact, the radar is getting a little more active as we speak. We're seeing more showers and storms develop off to the north and west of San Antonio. So let's get right to it, show you where that rain is at this hour. Out there in the hill country, so places like Rock Springs, that rain is on your doorstep. We're also seeing some showers and storms develop now. Uh, out towards Brackettville. We've also seen a couple of light returns just north of Hondo. So that tells me things are becoming a little bit more active, even one little cell there just to the south of Kerrville. And we'll see a lot of this sort of drift east. We may start to get some activity even here in Bear County a little bit later this afternoon. There are some lightning strikes mixed in there too. So a couple of rumbles of thunder. You could get some brief heavy rain out of this. And it looks like the heaviest of the stuff now is just west of Rock Springs, mainly in rural areas out there along Highway 277. But we should see the uh, this trend continue, I think, next couple of hours. 82 degrees right now, Bernie Stage, 85 Comfort, 88 New Braunfels. It's hot out there, 90 in Castroville, and there is quite a bit of humidity, so there is a heat index to contend with today. It'll feel a little bit warmer than the actual air temperature. 30% chance of rain through 6 o'clock. We'll get those temperatures up in the low 90s, and then they'll fall off tonight, mid 80s by 8 o'clock, 20% chance of rain. We'll have much more on our rain chances tomorrow, which, by the way, go up. We'll have that forecast here in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Justin. Alaska Airlines hoping it's buy one, get one free deal. We'll have people wanting to fly the friendly skies again, but you don't have too much time to book. We have details in your consumer news. And the Battlet Billies and Wimberley Texans get ready for a huge matchup Friday night. Larry Mirrors with a preview coming up in a few minutes in sports. Pringles was just dubbed a recycling villain. The top recycling villain actually. Wow. Now the company is reacting to the new label after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. It's your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Kohl's announcing Tuesday they're laying off roughly 15% of their workforce. This is they seek to cut costs amid the coronavirus pandemic. The retailer has been struggling in the last few months as the pandemic has weakened demand. In their most recent quarter, sales dropped by 23% compared to the same period last year. Meanwhile, Sony is quickly dispelling rumors that they're cutting production of their upcoming PS5 console. Bloomberg recently reporting that the gaming giant would cut production of those consoles by 4 million units. Sony responded saying that they've not changed the production number for their PlayStation 5 console. That's since the start of mass production. This comes as Sony releases the console at a virtual event later today. And cloud services company Snowflake is making their trading debut on the New York Stock Exchange today. The company is setting their IPO price at $120 a share. That indicates a valuation of more than $33 billion. Snowflake plans to offer 28 million shares under the ticker symbol SNOW. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Also in your consumer headlines this noon, a new survey shows the coronavirus has left the restaurant industry in limbo. According to the National Restaurant Association, nearly 100,000 restaurants have closed either long-term or permanently because of the pandemic. As a result, that's left nearly 3 million employees out of work. The survey found most restaurants are still struggling and don't expect their situations to improve. The industry is expected to lose $240 billion by the end of the year. All right, move over, Thanos. There's a new baddie in town, the Pringles can. The potato chip company has been dubbed the number one recycling villain. That label came from a recycling group in the United Kingdom. Now Pringles is looking to change its iconic packaging. No, the company is testing out two new looks for the tall tube. One has a paper lid instead of a plastic one. According to Kellogg's, both lids will be recyclable and uh, the new Pringles cans will appear on shelves in stores in the UK starting today. They expect their test to run for the next six weeks. 
Couldn't get rid of the canister. Alaska, Air Alaska Airlines announced guests who book a flight with them can also get a second seat on the same flight basically for free. And on top of that, the airline promises the third seat in the middle row will be empty, meaning you could have three seats to yourself for one price. This is a part of a policy to block the middle seat as COVID-19 safety precaution. The get the row with BOGO deal ends today and you must be traveling from now until October 31st. You may want to be on the lookout for some new holiday candy. Hershey's is releasing at least nine different holiday options for popular brands. One is a new flavor of Hershey's Kisses, the sugar cookie kiss. There's two new interactive candy bars, the Hershey Milk Chocolate Build-A-Santa and Cookies mm. and Cream Build-A-Snowman. Mm. These treats should be hitting stores nationwide before Halloween in October. Build a Santa had and to build mention a snowman. That. Well, and you've got Christmas candy coming out before oh, Halloween. Looks that's, good. that's not right. Well, I'm just glad there's some good news out there. You know, that's good news. <laughs> candy is always good news. Uh, we'll take it. 87 degrees the high temperature today. Uh, the low this morning, 74. Uh, the averages are 90 and 69. I, I think we'll actually be above average with regards to the high temperature, but we're certainly above average when it comes to the low. Uh, records are 99 and 55, set back in 1954 and 1945. We've got some rain on the radar. Some of it's trying to move towards San Antonio. We'll take a look at that radar coming up. The lot of rain, lot of rain over by Gulf Shores, Alabama, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and Pensacola area here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just here little and there bit. on the radar. Uh, certainly nothing compared to what they're dealing with off to the east. Uh, but we'll take a little bit of rain. There is some on the radar, and I think that it moves a little bit closer tomorrow. At the uh, tomorrow, at the moment, uh, we've got some showers and storms out there in the hill country. You see the big picture here. It really tells the story, right? We've got uh, those isolated showers and storms, and then. You go east and you find Sally, which is producing a ton of clouds, but obviously a lot of rain too. Very heavy rain. A little closer look here. You see those showers and storms popping up. These are slow movers. They may not last very long. They'll pop up and sort of fall apart, but they're still going to put down some pretty good rain, I think, in spots, uh, especially where you get some of these heavier cells there around Rock Springs. We're starting to see some new development here north of Hondo. Also around Kerrville, seeing a little bit of activity. Medina Lake, got a little shower popping up there that'll move pretty close to right over the lake. Uh, not seeing much here in San Antonio yet, but you can see it's trying to build east. So I think that we'll still have a shot uh, next few hours here of getting some of these downpours and a little closer look there. One little downpour west of Lakey, also west of Rock Springs there, mainly over rural areas, but still dumping some pretty good rain. We've seen some lightning strikes for this too. So there's going to be some lightning and thunder. Futurecast does show isolated activity today. This is around five o'clock. It'll be hit or miss around the area and then most everything dies down tonight and then you'll see a flare up again tomorrow as our upper level energy moves through. We could see a better coverage tomorrow. I think tomorrow afternoon uh, just because we'll have a little bit more energy in the atmosphere. Right now it's 87 degrees here in San Antonio. Humidity is at 57%. We have calm winds 84 Boulevardi, 82 Bernie stage, 85 in comfort, uh, 87 Gonzalez, 86 there in Kennedy. Uh, 85 Del Rio, 88 right now in Carrizo Springs. And there is a heat index because there is quite a bit of humidity out there. Feels like 92 here in town, 94 in Gonzales. It's like 95 right now in Catula. Okay, the latest on Sally, we've got tornado watch boxes out there. Oftentimes we'll see some tornadoes here on the east side of these storms uh, with some of these cells that track through. But the very heavy rain has been falling across parts of Florida and Alabama. Take a look at these estimates. These are radar estimates. Anywhere from 20 to 30 inches of rain. Uh, almost Harvey-esque, just the way it was moving is, is so slow. Uh, but there is obviously a huge issue with flooding ongoing there, not to mention they had some storm surge to deal with too. This heavy rain is moving up towards Montgomery, and then eventually it'll move off to Georgia in the next couple of days. Winds right now at 75 miles per hour, gusting to 100, and it's still moving very slow. North northeast at about five miles per hour. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, it should be almost through Georgia. It'll pick up some speed once that happens, and then it'll get out uh, and fall apart as it moves into the Carolinas. Uh, meantime, we've got several systems out there, obviously, in the Atlantic right now. Another one that'll probably be Wilfred here soon. But another area to watch, and we're going to have to color this one red now because the Hurricane Center has upped the chances of this area developing into something. 
You can see the thunderstorm sort of blossoming today. This wave's just sort of been sitting here. Of course, the big question next is where does this go? And there's some questions there. The models, they can't really get a good hold on it yet because, or a good idea of where it's going to go because there's not a center of circulation or anything like that. Uh, chances are it's probably going to move west into Mexico and fall apart, but there's still a chance it could drift north as well. So we definitely want to watch this with it being so close. We'll keep you updated and we'll follow it closely. Forecast for today, 87 degrees, 2 o'clock, 90 by 4 o'clock, 91. Your high temperature, 30% chance of rain there across the board. Until we get into this evening, we'll get those rain chances to fall off a little bit. 88 degrees tomorrow, 40% chance of rain. And then Friday, our rain chance is mainly down to the south. Lower humidity both Saturday and Sunday behind a weak frontal boundary. So the weekend looks nice. Overnight lows will be in the mid 60s both days. And then next week at the moment looks dry, guys. Beautiful. Thank you, Justin. UTSA still pretty excited about getting that first win for their new head coach. Yeah, his uh, first ever college football game as a head coach. Coach Jeff Trailer comes away with the dub. Not an easy one, but one of his players tweeted out something that made Coach pretty emotional when talking about it. And in the bigs, when it comes to the silver boot, the Astros pretty much dominating the Rangers. Coming up. Roadrunners have won their season opener. They'll try to do the same in their home opener this Saturday in the Alamo Dome when they host Stephen F. Austin in their COVID-19 adjusted schedule. But before that happens, an emotional moment when Coach Trailer and his starting quarterback, Frank Harris, were asked about Harris's tweet after their dramatic 51-48 double overtime victory versus Texas State in San Marcos. The tweet congratulating his head coach on his first victory ever as a head coach in college football, almost driving Trailer to tears. He believed in me way early. Uh, I don't know why he did, but he did. And uh, I'll always be grateful. Uh, my first quarterback at Kilmer's name is Olin Johnson. Uh, he believed in me very early in my career. And uh, it got me where I am today. He's currently coaching in Gilmer and sent me an amazing text before the game. Uh, those, are, those are the reasons I do it. Uh, those 488 texts, uh, at least 300 of them are players. And, uh, that's, that's why it means a lot to me. That's my guy. Uh, easy to play for. He's a man of his word, if you know who he is. Uh, and we love him. Uh, by, we bought that to him. Um, he's a player coach. And I'm telling you, there's not many guys like him, especially in the college world, in the college world, uh, the head coaching position. Coach Trailer added that he'll be down at least eight players who were left out of the season opener due to contact tracing, but does expect them to be cleared by Friday. However, since they haven't practiced, they won't be available for Saturday's 2 p.m. kick. And the big game and our big game coverage this Friday night will feature the number five ranked Batlin Billies of Fredericksburg in the sub 5A 12's top 12 against the number six Wimberley Texans. The Batlin Billies have started their season undefeated at 3-0, outscoring their opponents on average of 52 to 13, led by quarterback Cole Immel, who has six touchdowns in the air and four rushing. Now the Texans are coming off their first loss of the season to undefeated Lamb Passes 57-28, but before that, they had beaten Canyon Lake 24-22 and Quero 33-14 after advancing to state last year. Wimberley is going to be a good test for going forward into our district. Um, you know, Lamb Passes is a great team. Uh, they're going to be hard to beat, but um, it'll be good to see where we're at and what we need to work on. Wimberley is always good, and it's a good opponent. And I love playing good teams just to make us better. They're three, you know, they got a little bit of momentum going on right now, and we got to crush that going forward. Fred, they're, they're, they're a pretty good team. They got a few good athletes on their team. I think it's going to be a really good game. Got to come out, got to come out hard first half and we got to do, do what we do best. Kickoff in Wimberley is set for 730 Friday night in case that 12 sports will be there. All right, time to play ball. Texas at Houston, bottom of the seventh, game tied at one. Bases loaded for Alex Bregman, and he singles to left field. Jose Altuve and George Springer both score. Altuve almost running Springer over before getting to the plate. Houston wins game one of that series, four to one. Guys. That Harris coach relationship, man, that's what you miss when you don't have football and other sports like that. So yep. good to see that, uh, that happening right now. All right, Larry, thanks. A big word, not just regular fries and hamburgers, it's cuisine today.
<laughs> and a lot of it. Hopefully enough for everybody. <laughs> we'll see about that, of course, because it is lunchtime and mm -hmm. you are in luck because we've got a smorgasbord. A feast. A banquet. Basically, we've got something to satisfy you for whatever you're hungry for today on SA Live. Let's start with breakfast or better yet, brunchy brunch. It's a new brunch spot for a new season. We check out the fall flavors on the menu and a cocktail you have to see to believe. Hey, they look good. They taste even better and won't ruin your diet. Find out why these desserts are so, whoops, not the, uh, <laughs> why the cockatoo is so special. No, cockatoos well. will be harmed. <laughs> no, because that's a wild one. Because that is a wild Wednesday and I got to meet this umbrella cockatoo over at Animal World and Snake Farm Zoo. And of course, today is the ACC says Mexican Independence Day and we're making a traditional Mexican dish and learning some history about it as well. Plus, we're saving the best for last. That's right, Vanessa Williams. Five different pizzas, flavors you might never have even heard of, and we get to try them all. It's a tough job, but you know, we're doing it for you. Yeah, why not? So, and while we're talking about it, if you were a pizza, <laughs> should I do this like Barbara Walters? If you're a tree, if you were a pizza, what flavor would you be? <laughs> You'll find out our answers on SA Live. But share your comments on social media. Tag us at SA Live KSAT. You may see your answers on TV. Brand new starts just minutes.